All right, let's kick off another deep dive. Today we're going to be looking at the Endeavor OS Mercury release, brand new. And we've got an article right from their website, so let's jump into it. Um, first things first, it feels like it's been ages since the last one, Endeavor OS Neo. It has been a while, yeah, and the article actually mentions that right away. Oh, okay. So uh, what's the reason for the delay? Was it like a ton of technical problems? Well, there were a few technical hiccups, but that wasn't really the main thing. Seems like life just kind of got in the way for some of the team, which I think we can all relate to, right? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. So is this your regular schedule going to be the norm now? They do say it'll be a bit irregular, yeah. Hmm. Mainly because one of the core team members is focusing on professional development, which is a good thing, you know, for the project in the long run. Right. That makes sense. What about people who are already using Endeavor S? Do they have to do a complete reinstall to get all the Mercury features? Nope, not at all. The article is very clear about that. Just keeping your system updated is all you need. This ISO is mostly for, like, fresh installs. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. You mentioned the technical challenges earlier. What kind of issues did they actually run into? They talk about a few things. Uh, there were some challenges with the latest Linux kernel, version 6.13, mm -hmm. and then the XFCE 4.20 update was a bit tricky. They also had to deal with some stuff with Cephdisk, which is, you know, a tool for messing with disk partitions. And on top of that, there were some problems with Calamari's, their installer, specifically something called KPM Core. I'm guessing some listeners might be like, whoa, too technical. Can we break that down a little? Of course. So basically, think of the Linux kernel as like the engine of the whole operating system. <laughs> and XFCE 4.2 is the dashboard, the visual stuff you use. Cephdisk and Calamares, those are the mechanics getting everything installed on your computer. They just had to make sure all those parts were working together smoothly, especially for people who are new to Linux. Hmm. Gotcha. That makes a lot more sense. So the big technical stuff is sorted. But what about like smaller bugs? Did they have a plan for those? Absolutely. They've got this cool system where the new ISO automatically applies hotfixes before you even begin installing. So you always start with the latest, most stable version. Smart. Sounds like quality control is a big priority. But uh, what about hardware, specifically new hardware coming out? Could that cause problems later on? They did mention that could be a potential issue. Newer hardware might have dupe problems with the older kernel in the ISO. But they said they'll fix any problems like that in the future, Neo and Nova releases. That's reassuring. So they're on top of it. Now, I got to ask about the look of Mercury. Anything new there? Well, the announcement has this really cool image by an artist, Uncle Spellbinder. Really eye-catching. Always love when projects feature artists. Okay, what about the actual software packages included in Mercury? It comes loaded with updated packages for both the live environment and offline installation. So you've got Calamara's 25.02.1 per Tor 1, Linux 6.13.1.arch21, Mesa 1.24.3.41, Xorg Server 21.1.151 for Xorg, and NVIDIA 570.86.163 for people with NVIDIA graphics cards. Well, that's quite a list. I mean, some of those might sound familiar to Linux users, but it's all the latest versions, right? Yeah. What I'm really interested in, though, are the new features, the improvements. What are some of the big ones? Yeah, lots to cover there. One cool addition is a memory test for EFI systems. Helps make sure your hardware is good to go right from the start. And they fixed some issues with BIOS legacy installations, which is great for people with older computers. Sounds like big improvements. Anything else new? Well, everyone seems to love dark mode these days, so KDE, GNOME, XFCE4, Mete, Budgie, and Cinnamon all now default to a darker theme. They've also tweaked the XFCE4 theme a bit to be closer to the default XFCE setup, so it's all more consistent. Oh, yeah. Speaking of details, didn't they do something with the GNOME wallpapers, too? Yes. Now, GNOME will automatically switch between light and dark wallpapers depending on which mode you're using. It's a nice touch. And they brought back the replace partition feature so users have more options during installation. Plus, they squashed that annoying EFI dropdown bug in the installer. It sounds like they've really been listening to user feedback, making the whole installation process better. Any other improvements worth mentioning? Well, they've made it easier for artists and media people to access the Endeavor OS branding, which is great for the community. And they streamlined how mirrorlists are handled during installation. Yeah, so downloading and setup should be faster now. It seems like they really put a lot of work into fixing all sorts of issues, big and small, to make things smoother. It's really cool how they're doing all this technical stuff, but also keeping the artistic side and the community involved shows they care about making a well-rounded distribution, right? <laughs> but speaking of mirrorless, I think those can be kind of confusing for new users. What are they all about? 
So when you install Linux, you need to download lots of packages, which are basically like bundles of software. And those packages are stored on servers all around the world called mirrors. The mirror list tells your computer where to find the fastest mirrors to download from. So the Endeavor team made it easier for the installer to deal with those mirror lists, which makes everything quicker and easier for everyone. That's super helpful, especially for anyone who's like new to Linux and all this. Yeah. So we've talked about all these updates and improvements, but what does it all actually mean for the average user? What's the big takeaway here? It shows that Endeavor OS is still growing and getting better all the time. They're not just sitting back, they're listening to their community, fixing things and adding new features. It's like they're trying to find that sweet spot between having a stable system based on Arch Linux, but also making it easy for people to use, you know, even if they're not experts. Yeah, exactly. Endeavor OS has always been good at making Arch Linux more accessible, but it feels like they're taking it even further with this release. They've got a strong base and they're building on it in really smart ways. Mm. It's pretty attractive, especially for people who might be a bit intimidated by Arch's reputation for being, well, complicated. Totally. They're making Arch easier for more people to try without losing any of its power or customization. It's a hard thing to do, but they're doing it well. And it's not just about the technical stuff. It's also about creating a welcoming community, you know, encouraging art and making sure everyone feels like they belong in the Endeavor OS world. That's really awesome to see. It makes you wonder what's next for Endeavor OS. Are they going to keep growing and getting even better? It's a good question. Looking at what they've done with Mercury, I think they're in a great spot to keep succeeding. They've got a good formula, mixing the stability and power of art with user friendliness and a strong community. And even the irregular release schedule even though it's unpredictable, shows what's important to them. It's not about rushing things out the door. They take their time to get things right, even if it means waiting longer for a new release. It's quality over quantity. Absolutely. And that way of working builds trust with their community. People know that when a new Endeavor OS release comes out, it's going to be well tested and have real improvements. That's important, especially when everything seems to be about speed these days. So we've talked about a lot here. The delay, the technical stuff, the new features and improvements, and the Endeavor OS community. And we talked about those automatic hotfixes, the potential issues with new hardware, and how much attention they paid to little details like themes and wallpapers. Oh, and we can't forget that cool image by Uncle Spellbinder. It reminds us that Endeavor OS isn't just code, it's a bunch of passionate people creating something special. Yeah, the Endeavor OS team is really passionate about what they do. You can see it in everything about this Mercury release, from the technical side to the artistic side. And with that, as we wrap up this deep dive into Endeavor OS Mercury, we want to leave you, our listener, with one final thought to think about. Yeah. Given how dedicated Endeavor OS is to always improving and how close they are to their community, what do you think is next for them? I mean, could they become like a really big name in the Linux world? Or will they stay a kind of hidden gem for people who already know about them? Mm, that's a tough one. I guess only time will tell. But looking at Mercury, there are definitely some signs. They really understand their users. They're not afraid of technical challenges. And they're always working to make the user experience better. Yeah, and they're managing to do all that while staying true to what makes Arch Linux so cool. It's that mix of power and user friendliness that makes Endeavor AS so interesting, right? Exactly. They've made Arch usable for a lot more people without taking away any of its flexibility or customization. That's a hard balance to strike, and they're doing a great job with it. So if anyone out there is looking for a Linux distro that's powerful and easy to use and has a passionate community and developers behind it, Endeavor OS might be the one for you. You might even end up contributing to the project yourself. And on that note, we'll wrap up our deep dive into the Endeavor OS Mercury release. We hope you enjoyed it. And we encourage you to keep exploring Linux. There's a ton to discover out there. Happy exploring, everyone. <laughs>